This is TOS Television, your digital first Pan-African news network. You're watching Business Report Africa. I am Rua Penawa. Abia State Governor Okezi Ekpeazu has shown the interest of the state in encouraging the workflow for its people. Speaking on the impact of businesses in the state, the governor said that about 5,330 women have been empowered through the school feeding program in the state. Governor Ekpeazu also pointed out that lots of youth in the state have been sent abroad to learn manufacturing skills as the state government is, is making plans to bring in machines for manufacturing in the state that will empower youth as well as keep them on their toes. Expressing delight in the creativity, the governor revealed that for six years, he has worn only dresses made in Abba in Abia, and he was proud of what the creative industry is doing in his state. On Thursday, April 22, the National Economic Council, NEC, said there was no printing of 60 billion naira or any other amount whatsoever. Recently, there have been insinuations that 60 billion naira was printed to show up allocation for the month of March. After reviewing presentations given by the Minister of Finance, Zainab Ahmed, and the Governor of the Central Bank of Nigeria, Godwin Amefiele, as well as the Nigerian Governor's Forum, the Governor said the NEC meeting was satisfied with the clarifications made. The CBN Governor assured the Council that the allegation was false. In line with the executive order signed by President Muhammad Buhari authorizing companies that provide critical infrastructure like roads to be granted tax waivers, the Nigerian liquefied natural gas company, NLNG, has gotten a 20 billion naira tax waiver from the federal government due to its construction of the Bodo Boni Bridge in River State. So far, the company in the last three years has gotten three credit certificates valued at 46 billion naira. Following its resolve to boost clean energy, the federal government is keen on increasing the deployment of renewable energy while targeting to cut greenhouse gas emissions by at least 20% come 2030. Professor Eli Didere Bala, the Director General of the Energy Commission of Nigeria, ECN, has said work has begun starting with the formation of a national steering committee and technical working group. Most importantly, the major task is how to utilize these resources with intent to guarantee absolute industrial of the nation. The International Monetary Fund rated Egypt as the second largest economy in the Arab region in 2020, with a total amount of $361.8 billion. Reports from the IMF have it that the devastating effects of the COVID-19 pandemic have not made Egypt derail from outperforming several economies in the Arab region. This is your Digital First Pan-African News Network, TOS Television, and you're watching Business Report Africa. To stay tuned. Evergrow has signed a $400 million worth of loan agreement with a consortium of 12 banks. The Egyptian fertilizer company will restructure previous debts it owes to the same banks and finance the construction of the third phase of the company's fertilizer plant. The company, due to the EGP float, faced financial difficulties and this raised the cost of the plant's third phase. Egypt and Libya have come to terms with numerous ways to increase economic cooperation. During a meeting between the Libyan Minister of Economy and Trade and the Egyptian Minister of Trade and Industry, both countries placed emphasis on the need to pay keen attention to agreements in the economic field, organize markets and make adequate preparations for the joint Libya and Egyptian Committee. While they encourage investment, methods on increasing the volume of trade exchange between both countries were sourced, amongst other valuable discussions, which included the formation of an economic committee to follow up the implementation of the agreements. The state-owned National Oil Corporation is expecting the sum of 1.048 billion Libyan dinars, which is more or less $232.5 million in payment from Libya's new oil and gas ministry, for the settlement of a dispute that disrupted 280,000 barrels per day of oil capacity. Reports from the ministry have it that 500 million Libyan dinners have been transferred to the NOC, yet the NOC and Mustafa Sanalia, NOC chairman, said today production in Libya decreased to 1 million barrels per day from 1.3 million barrels per day previously. A decline is expected because of budgetary issues. 
On Thursday, April 22, the Surat Oil Company, SOC, made announcements that it would not be able to continue with its oil production due to a lack of funds, noting that it suspended output because it had not received its budget since September. In a letter addressed to the President of the National Oil Corporation, the Chairman of the Board of Directors of the company, Masood Suleiman Musa, made mention of the fact that the decision to stop oil production was taken due to critical financial situations that made it impossible for the company to fulfill its contractual obligations to contractors. The company then asked the chairman of the NOC to address the relevant authorities to provide the necessary funding to continue operations. And on a good note, reports have it that Morocco's economic recovery has outperformed the nations across Africa and Latin America. Bloomberg's credible economics ranking has placed Morocco's economic recovery in the top 10 of the world, outperforming all of Eastern Europe, the Caribbean, Africa, Central, and South America. While the International Monetary Fund is optimistic as well about Morocco, the financial um, giant is keen on Morocco's continued vaccination to help its economy, especially in the aspect of tourism. Reports from risk management firm at Tradius state that exports of goods and services in Morocco is expected to grow by almost 9% in 2021, yet recovery in the tourism sector will be slow for a while. You're still watching Business Report Africa on your digital first Pan African News Network, TOS Television. More to stay, more to watch after the break. Do stay tuned. <laughs> Thank you for staying with us. After Ramadan, direct flights will be open between Israel and Morocco. According to the head of the Moroccan Liaison Office in Tel Aviv, Abd Al Rahim Bioud, both countries will work together to launch the direct flights. This is part of the joint declaration signed by Morocco and Israel and Morocco on December 22, along with the U.S. after Morocco decided to resume diplomatic relations with Israel. The joint declaration aims to promote cooperation in innovation, trade, agriculture, investment and tourism. Soon as Angola's inflation starts slowing this year, its central bank will have room to boost the economy with lower interest rates. For almost two years, the National Bank of Angola has left its key rate on chains and has tried to monitor price growth, taking it into cognizance that's a major problem with interest rates lying the structure of the economy, which is dependent on imports. The Angolan economy is set to expand about 1% this year after five straight years of contraction and the country's total reserves have been stabilized at about $15 billion. Angola is the third biggest oil producer in Africa and after falling from its number one position six years ago, the country is intent on reviving its oil industry and kick-starting its oil-dependent economy. The Angolan economy has been in recession for five consecutive years and is currently keen on attracting investments in oil. To achieve this, the country is planning to sell up to 30% in its state oil firm, Sonangol, in 2022, which is worth about 6.4 billion US dollars. There are expectations that this partial privatization of Sonangol, as well as proceeds from the other projects, will show up the finances of the government and help revive the economy. The Democratic Republic of Congo and Kenya had signed crucial agreements on transport, security and trade with intentions to improve low figures of business between both countries. This week, both countries signed a new deal to handle cargo from the port of Mombasa that grants the DRC certain privileges for using Kenyan facilities and plans to open diplomatic outposts to ease consular services for traders are underway. Kenya is keen on getting to a point where both countries can tackle their problems together and promote technical, economic, social, cultural, and scientific cooperation. And on a final note, the CBN exchange rate, dollar to Naira, has a buying rate of 379 Naira and a selling rate of 318 Naira. Pound to Naira has a buying rate of 521 Naira and a selling rate of 522 Naira. Euro to Naira has a buying rate of 453 Naira and a selling rate of 454 Naira, and the South African Rand has a buying rate of 26 Naira and a selling rate of 26 Naira. That's all we have on Business Report Africa. Remember to follow us on all our social media handles at TOS TV Network on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Like and subscribe to our YouTube channel at TOS TV Network. I am Ruwa Panawa. Thank you for watching.